Okay, so aplastic anemia, you gotta know that plastic is talking about cell division, okay? A is without. So this is a condition where for whatever reason, your bone marrow stops producing um, your, your cells, right? And it, it can be caused, it could be induced by like certain drugs like chemotherapy drugs, methotrexate, uh, exposure to chemical toxins, um, radiation therapy, even viral issues that the patient deals with. For some reason, their immune system starts destroying the bone marrow. So in all of those scenarios, that's considered a plastic anemia. But the thing about a plastic anemia is that the causing factor can be eliminated. Okay, as opposed to the polycythemia vera, right? This one, the causing factor could be eliminated once it's identified, we can fix it. The big issue though, is that people with a plastic anemia, they have something called um, pancytopenia. And think of pancytopenia as a whole panel of cells, cyto is cells. So the whole panel of blood cells are deficient. We're talking about red blood cells, we're talking about white blood cells. And we're talking about platelets, okay? All three of those are deficient. That's pancytopenia. You guys have to know, if the patient is lacking RBCs, the patient's gonna have manifestations of anemia. That's what you have to be able to identify, and you have to be able to give interventions to treat that specific issue. If the patient has a lack of platelets, then the patient will be at risk for what? Clotting. Ah, they have a lack of platelets. Bleeding. Bleeding, they're gonna be at risk for bleeding because they cannot clot, right? So that risk for hemorrhage, you wanna give them platelets. And then of course, they're also gonna have a lack of white blood cells. And if they have a lack of white blood cells, what are they at risk for? Infection. That's what your concern is. That's your medical, you know, that's your role as a nurse to be able to identify indications of any of these and appropriate interventions to ensure that the patient doesn't bleed out, doesn't, uh, doesn't have uh, severe symptoms of anemia, or is not, what are they at risk for when they have low white blood cell count? Infection. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Now, medications that we give for this one, uh, we could give bone marrow stimulants, but the main thing we're going to be giving, doing is perhaps a bone marrow transplant. Okay? Bone marrow transplant is where we get healthy bone marrow from either another part of the body or another person, and we transplant it into this area so it can repopulate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Of course, since I discussed that a lot of other secondary things can cause aplastic anemia, then you can just remove the affecting agent and that's gonna hopefully alleviate the symptoms. But your job is to look out and implement interventions to keep um, control of the possible complications of pancytopenia. Does that make sense, guys? And uh, keep in mind that when someone has a bone marrow transplant, they have to, uh, they have to irradiate or provide radiation to the damaged or the unworkable bone marrow and they have to destroy the prior existing marrow before they do the transplant. So that's an important nursing teaching that you guys need to know about as well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool.